first of all, I I cannot tell you how amazed I am at the interest in what I put out there. Just seeing all your smiling faces really makes me happy. And I mean, I've, as you probably all know, have devoted my entire career towards selling art. So I came up with this idea of, hey, you know what? Let's put together a webinar and talk a little bit about really all the questions that you all have. So I, I was telling Julia, who does our marketing uh, the other day, I just said, you know, I was really expecting maybe a handful of people, a dozen people to respond. We have over, I think it's over 220 people right now <laughs> as part of this. Uh, and I cannot tell you um, how excited I am to see all of your beautiful faces out there. Uh, the questions that you've all submitted, many of you have submitted, we have a lot of questions. Uh, Julia was able to consolidate the questions into only three full pages. <laughs> so uh, I have a lot of questions. I think what we're gonna do is out of the, we consolidated them to, it looks like 50, 53 questions, but I, you know, I wanna be very thoughtful about your time. And so I'm going to keep this to an hour max. So I think the structure of how we're going to do this today is um, I'm going to uh, start with the uh, questions that I think are relevant that many, many of you have asked. And, um, and then at the end of uh, me speaking and answering these questions individually, I'm going to open it up to all of you and you can then raise your hand and I'll let you know when, when that time is right. Um, you can raise your hand and you can ask uh, any question that you want. So, um, and I'm also thinking that because this is so popular and it, there's such a demand for uh, a, a webinar like this, we're gonna do it again. We're gonna do it again and we're gonna keep going um, because that is really my mission is to help artists and to get their work sold. So I wanna introduce you to my team. So uh, to my right is Caitlin, and she is our um, relationship manager. You're uh, going to be talking a lot with her in upcoming we do all kinds of things. Uh, then next to her is Lydia, and Lydia is uh, at my assistant, heavily working with me on business development. I'm getting new clients for this year, as well as working with our assistant. She is uh, working with us to create the gallery uh, to be more efficient and for all of us, uh, for the entire team, work as best as we can together. And then I don't know if you can see Julia, she will pop, she's behind the scenes. Julia does a lot of our uh, marketing and social media. And then Andy, Andy, our gallery director, there she is, there she is. So um, the ABC team is 13 people strong. We have two galleries. This gallery that you're in right now is our uh, main gallery, 13,000 square feet and over a thousand pieces of art. We are open every single day except the weekends. And, um, and then we also have our smaller gallery across the bridge in Kentucky. And that we just opened about six months ago. So we, we may need to do most of the things uh, here in this gallery. Okay, so um, looking over all of these amazing questions. First of all, raise your hand if you cannot hear me. Is there anybody out there that cannot hear me? Okay, so technology is working. <laughs> technology is working. Um, so Julia, do you wanna focus in on me now? This is so exciting, I see a lot of friendly, uh, faces. I see a lot of people that I know, and I see people that I, I don't think I've met before. All right. So um, one of the questions that um, are many, actually many of the questions that uh, I have been given uh, are relate to how to work with a gallery. So I think this uh, session today is going to be focused on that, and uh, that's where I have a lot of experience. So we're, we're gonna definitely be talking about that. So one of the first questions is, what is the 
proper way to approach a gallery? And should there be any fees associated with the gallery? So it is, are we good? Can everybody hear me? And okay. So I'm gonna, uh, it's a two part question. So how to best approach a gallery? Um, and actually, uh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna dive into this a little bit, but I, I can't answer all of this uh, today. We actually have a course out there right now that if you are interested in the course, you can uh, register for that. And it talks about how to get into a gallery. Actually, my sister and I did this course together, but for now, I'm gonna answer it the best that I can. So many of you are asking what the proper way of getting into a gallery. So maybe I'll start off with the, the way not to approach a gallery. So one thing that I would suggest that you never do is just show up without an appointment because gallerists uh, are very busy people just like anybody in their jobs. They're busy, their, their schedules are booked, everything is, you know, of what they need to do is scheduled. And uh, even if they're in the gallery, they might have appointments with clients, they might have appointments with their artists or their, or their team or whoever. So I would suggest that you never just show up unannounced. Now, the best way to actually show up is during an opening. So that is the, the best way to get to know a uh, gallery casually is to go to one of their openings or go to many of their openings because that's when they have the free time. You can get a glass of wine, a glass of water, look around in the gallery, check it out, and then have an opportunity to speak with them. Now, the most important thing is don't just stop there. Try to frequent more of their openings, more of their events. Um, get to know the gallery director, get to know the owner of the gallery, and get to know all the people that work there because uh, it is so, for me, and this is a whole other topic that I could talk about forever, relationships. It's great to get to know people. So another thing is if uh, the gallery that you're going to offers framing services, why not take your artwork there? And that's twofold. You know how many times I've actually met an artist and looked at their work and brought them into the gallery when they just brought it in to do framing? Like, you know, it's exciting for us to be able to see the newest work that an artist is doing. Um, you know, it's just, uh, you know, really fun. And you're, you know, you're able to meet and have that one on one time with uh, going over there if they do framing, but that is one tip uh, if they do. One thing that's critically important is research. Do your homework. And what I mean by that, and uh, as I'm speaking, I see people that actually have their notepads and their pencils out and pens. Um, please write these things down if you can, because they're really, really important. And, um, and then also as I'm speaking, Make sure if you have any questions that arise uh, when we do have the live uh, Q&A at the end, uh, then you can have your questions right there because I, I'm happy to answer those as well. Uh, so back to uh, doing your research. What I mean by that is you know what kind of work you do. Are you a wildlife painter? Are you an abstract artist? Do you do figurative work? Uh, do, you, do you do bronze sculpture? Are you a glass artist? You know what your work is and what style it is as well. Look at galleries out there that could be a good fit for you. So uh, for instance, let's say you're a wildlife painter and your work is phenomenal but yet you're sending it to a gallery that specializes in modern art. They're not gonna call you. And you know what? It's not because they don't like your work. It's because that's not what they sell. So don't ever get discouraged if someone is not calling you back or not replying to you. It most likely has nothing to do with you and your work, but it might not be the right fit for that particular gallery. So I want you to keep that in mind. Generally, we are creatives like us. 
we're, we're very kind souls. We're very emotional and we take things personally. And we shouldn't because in the business of art, uh, it's a lot of it is about um, how can that gallery make money? And does that artist's work fit in with the other arts yet is different? So hopefully that makes sense to you. Does it fit in? Is it, is it different? So let's say you're contacting a gallery and they, they have an impressionistic uh, painter that does these beautiful landscapes and your work is similar to that. So you say, hey, you know what? There's another artist that they have where their work is kind of like mine, you know, similar in colors or whatever. You know what? They're not going to have you come in. You know why? The work is too similar. So as a gallerist, we're looking for new work, new ideas, new concepts, things that reflect who you are, that fit what we already have, but could be a wonderful addition to what we currently are selling. So I hope that makes sense. You don't want to match their art, but you want to fit in with what they already have. So, um, okay, let's go back to how to get into a gallery. All right, we've talked a little bit about going to the openings. We've talked about if there's any framing involved, whatever, but let's say you're far away. You can't go to that gallery. You can't go in there personally. So you are trying to get your portfolio out there. You've done um, an incredible new body of work that you're super proud of and uh, you want to show it to these new galleries. You've done your research. So you've got a list that you've made um, and maybe you've saved them on your phone, all these galleries that you want to reach out to. Maybe you've looked at them on Instagram and you've saved them. So now it's, and if you feel that the, the work that you're doing is a great, um, you know, it, it works well within that gallery, what I always, uh, I get a lot of emails and so does everybody else from artists every single day. But here's what stands out. I'm going to give you a little tip. What stands out is when I get a personal email, I don't want a mass email that you've sent to 58 other galleries that says the same thing. I want a, a personal email that says, hi, Lisa. My name is so-and-so. And I would like to, I'm reaching out to you because I want to show you some of my latest works. So here's another thing that I really, really appreciate what an artist does, and I hope you're taking notes on this, is that you always make a personal comment about the gallery, about what they've done. So when you research that gallery, Look on their Instagram, look on their website, and and if something uh, you know resonates with you, like let's say they did a beautiful home, they just finished a home with all this artwork, you might make a comment as to, hey, I loved what you did for that home, or the healthcare that that a hospital that you just worked on, it was beautiful. And I just want to let you know how much I uh, really have enjoyed looking at the projects that you've done and the clients that you serve. So that is another that is another way, very very personal connection with the galleries. Okay, another question that uh, I, I could I could go into this for a long long time, but we have a very short time here, so I'm going to move on to the next question. And a few people asked. Should I pay a fee to get into a gallery? The answer is no. I think that uh, a fee is not necessary to be shown in a gallery. I've never throughout my career ever have taken fees uh, to pay for wall space or to be in the gallery. Now, um, we uh, with the fees, we charge a commission. So what we typically do, and this is standard throughout the industry, is we do a 50% commission when a piece of art sells. So that is very standard. Um, that is something that you should automatically accept. Um, and going back to when I say 50% commission, 
I am not saying that you raise your art 50% or you double your art. I'm saying that whatever your art is priced at on your website, on your Instagram, at other galleries, all has to be the same. So when you get into a gallery, if you need a thousand dollars for that piece, anywhere that it's shown out there, it should be shown for two thousand dollars at the least. So we we never galleries never mark up the art. We always take a commission. And even when people reach out to you on your website, if it's a retail buyer, you price it at two thousand. You do not give. The, the piece away at $1,000, the same price that a gallery has to pay for it. Uh, you will cause a lot of issues with galleries when it comes to pricing like that um, because a galleries want to trust you and they want to understand that you're not going to you're not going to undersell them. They work very, very hard for their artists. So I hope that um, everybody understands that because it's really, really important. Um, only other fees that, for instance, ADC. We're a little bit different because we go to national shows and we uh, when we do go to national shows, whether it's New York, Miami, Santa Fe, San Diego, all the different places that we go to, um, we uh, they're very expensive. So we a lot of times ask for the artist to share in the cost of the space. So that is, you know, when you travel to other shows. So that's something uh, to expect in many cases because so expensive to do the national shows. Um, so let's move on to, hold on, I gotta put on my glasses. Um, how do I apply for representation at ADC? So, um, and I can speak for that, absolutely. Right now, a lot of people did uh, wanna know how they can have representation here. Uh, it's simple. All you need to do is uh, spend Annie Counts, who is our gallery director, uh, uh, maybe a few of your best pieces in an email, and her email address is annie at adcfineart.com. And so what happens is we have our team meetings every week, and we review all of the artists that have applied to be in ADC. And again, we're not reviewing for technical ability or the talent. I mean, we look for that. I mean, that's very, very important. But ultimately, what question we asked during our meetings when we look at bringing on new artists is can we sell their work? That's really the number one thing. Does it fit in with what we're doing? Can we sell their work? And what sets us apart, I think, uh, you know, with many galleries is we are known for showing and selling so many different types of work. Uh, right now in the gallery, we've got a big show with, I think it's like 175 artists hanging in the gallery right now. So 175 different things. The, the, the theme of what we do is they have to be alive. They have to be living contemporary artists. So if the work, and we're always accepting glass, paintings, sculpture, photography, uh, mixed media, ceramics. Uh, we had a big show for Insika last year. We had about, I don't know, 25 uh, different ceramicists here. The, um, amazing show. So our clients expect variety here. Um, and because the space is so large and we've been around so long, we can do that. Other galleries are a little bit, you know, when they're smaller, um, you know, they don't, they just don't have the room or, you know, uh, who knows? I, I, I can only speak for us, but we do accept work and we're always, always looking for new talent. So don't hesitate in sending Annie um, an, a few images or a link to your website so we can see and then we can review your art. Um, one thing that I will talk to you a little bit about at the end of the session is we have a new marketing program for artists called Smart Cell. And um, I will tell you a little bit more about that. And this is uh, moving into just a grander uh, way of marketing your art and me taking the knowledge that I've learned all these years and, and sharing it with all of you, which is pretty exciting. So I'll move into that a little bit later. Um, okay, so here's another great question. Um, why is a gallery representation worth it if you can't guarantee sales? So ultimately, it is about sales. We have to sell art. 
to pay our bills, to pay our rent, to pay our employees, to pay our taxes. It bottom line is it's all about sales. That's why when I had mentioned before about researching the gallery, a gallery wants to know that you've had success in the past or that you're doing a new body of work that is really exciting, that you've had great following on, on social media or whatever. And, and, and don't be afraid to toot your horn a little bit. Let them know, you know, about what you're doing and any accolades or awards that you've won or whatever. But if, um, if a gallery is, I mean, um, just not selling your work, then it's, it's probably a couple things. It could be the pricing. The pricing is either too low or too high. Uh, it could be um, the fact that maybe that was, um, you know, a year for the gallery where they didn't sell that type of work as much. Like I know for us, uh, we have ups and downs like this, where we go on a run and we sell a lot of sculpture one month and sell paintings the next month. Or, you know, it just depends on the projects that we do, you know, healthcare. It's a little bit of a different type of, um, you know, artwork maybe than what uh, a hospital or a hotel might be buying or so it just depends their cycles, you know, so uh, but you have to look at maybe the whole year and don't assume that things are going to sell immediately. Um, that usually doesn't happen, although sometimes it does, which is, you know, exciting, but you you can't in this business, you can't guarantee sales. All you can say is. I'm going to give it my best shot. And I, you know, I'm going to do the best that I can. And, um, you know, this year for us, uh, we're hiring our consultants. We have our marketing program that we are just moving forward with in many ways. Um, we are always looking for new ways of selling art. So, um, so don't uh, worry if your things aren't selling. And another thing is maybe, it, maybe you create another body of work. Maybe it's um, so a lot of times it could be sales or it could be the pricing of the work. It could be maybe um, that that particular body of work just wasn't as popular that. Day. So um, we'll move on. How are we doing on time? It's uh, 326. It's 326. OK, so we've got like probably about um, 15, 20 more minutes, which is great. Um, raise your hand if you think I'm talking too minutes. fast. So I feel like, you know, sometimes I I speak really quickly and I uh, so OK, so I'm not talking too fast from the people that I'm seeing. Um, great. OK, so. Um, OK, so here's a question. Why do galleries have to take a cut from my sales? How does that work? OK. So if we didn't take a cut, if we didn't take a commission on your sale, how would we stay in business? So that is really the main thing is the reason galleries take a percentage from the sale is so the artists will benefit and then they will benefit. And so in a nutshell, that's the reason. That is the reason why we take a percentage off of the sale so we can continue doing business as with any other business out there. That's how um, so that is a very simple answer to that question. But you know what? That's asked pretty frequently. And a lot of times it's by emerging artists that maybe are out of school and don't understand business or the, the you know, the um, the practical side of business. But, um, you know, commercial galleries are. Are supposed to make sales, otherwise there is no commercial gallery. Now, if it's a museum, if it's a nonprofit, they get grant money, and that grant money pays for their bills. But we always rely on sales. So, um, just wanted to make sure that. Uh, and if you have any other questions about that, please write it down. I'm happy to answer. So the other one is. Um, when showing a um, my work in your gallery, how many pieces is standard? OK, well, it just depends on the gallery. Ask them, uh, you know, we, uh, you know, it just depends on the art, the artist and what we need. So, for instance, if uh, if we are working on a large project, let's say we're working on a bank and they need 100 pieces of art. And your work will fit really well in that bank. We're going to need to show the bank lots of your pieces. 
Um, if it's a group show where we are doing a lot of different artists here, we might just want one or two pieces. Um, if you have a gallery contract with us, it'll be an ongoing process, which means that we sell art, we get new. We sell art, we get new, you know, and we always want to see the new work that you're doing. Um, so in that case, so in every situation, it's a little bit different. And um, so I, you know, I really don't know. You just have to ask the gallery that you're working with that question um, because most people also uh, don't have storage for a lot of art. Uh, we are fortunate that we do. We've got a lot of, and when I say storage, I'm talking about really the boxes because we save all the boxes. All of the artwork that we have is in this gallery. It was designed um, to be able to show art at any time. So even if it's not hanging on a wall, we have racks and racks of arts, of uh, art that I and my team take our clients to all the time where we have the art uh, it's usually grouped by size and we, it's all facing in one direction. And we literally the clients here, we pull the art out, we pull another piece. So even if the art is not necessarily on the wall, we are always showing it to our clients. Um, another way that we also show art to clients is virtually. And I'm gonna talk a little bit about that. Uh, when you are represented by ADC, we have a section on our website that shows every artist. It's your own profile page and it shows every piece of art. And um, on the website, everything that's there is also here in the gallery. So what happens is, let's say we are working on a project in uh, Texas and they can't physically come here. Uh, but they need art pretty quickly. So what we do is we either work with their designer or we work, work with their facility manager, whoever's in charge of the art program for that particular project. And we ask them to give us floor plans, color boards, uh, anything, photos of the space. So we do uh, virtual presentations. And so Annie, our gallery director, is our specialist specialist when it comes to virtual presentations. And we do these quite, quite often. So we will take the art that we currently have. We always start with that first and we will present it to the client. So we might have if they don't have if the building is, let's say, not finished yet, we will um, ask them for floor plans and we'll use a, a white background and we'll just show them images of art we'll, that we'll suggest. Uh, artwork for your lobby, artwork for your conference rooms, you know, patient rooms, whatever that project might be. Um, if if they say, you know what, we love that piece of art, what else do you have? If we don't have it here, that's when we would call you and we would say, hey, Sally Smith, what else do you have? And you would send us images and then we would put those into uh, the next presentation with that client. So we generate uh, sales from the gallery, from the art that's around, but we also generate sales from all the projects that we're working on continuously. So, um, oh, okay. Well, another question just came up that's super important. Um, let's talk about the importance of having a website. So would you all show me, raise your hand if you have a website. Raise your hand if you have a website. Seeing if there's anybody that does not have a website. Terry and David, uh-uh-uh, no, no, no. <laughs> um, I, most of you have a website. Now, why? Why is a website important? Okay, let me tell you, uh, many of you, okay, let's have a raise of hands. Who does social media, especially Instagram? Who, who does social media? Raise your hands if you do. Okay, that's great. And that's just a few people that I'm seeing. So I'm just kind of looking at overall. Uh, so what happens is uh, good marketing is, um, is a system that it, uh, it, it, it's not a one shot kind of thing. You don't just post a picture on Instagram and expect a sale. You don't just have a 
website and think that people are going to go on it and just buy all your artwork. It's very, very rare for that to happen. True marketing is uh, many things that come together to show people who you are and what you're all about and your brand, what you do, why you're special, why your artwork is um, so important to you, your inspiration. There's so many ways. But if you put your work on your Instagram, um, then how, if you don't have a website, how are people going to go and see what else you've done? Because how Instagram and social media works is, you know, you might post a reel, you might post an image or whatever, but it needs to lead to something. So uh, what we do here is we use Linktree. So if we want people to go to our website, they, they go on our Linktree that lists different sections of our website, or like if we want them to RSVP for an event or whatever. Um, and we can, we're going to uh, actually do a course on that here coming up. Uh, next month, we're going to do a course on marketing and social media. But um, without, let's say, a designer finds you on Instagram and they want to see more of your work, but they don't necessarily want to reach out to you right away. They want to go on your website. If you don't have a website, most likely you're going to lose that, that connection with somebody. You know, uh, or it could go the opposite. Let's say you have a website. It's a pretty good website. And but there's really no social media to go with that. And you know, this, this world, people love to see social media. They wanna see an artist creating work. They wanna see an artist selling the work. They wanna see the galleries that, they, that are represented, you know, they uh, have their work at uh, selling and showing and doing all this. That's what you do constantly on social media. But you, uh, on your website, it should be uh, all about you your what inspires you, your bio, uh, work, uh, previous work from the past, uh, current work, pieces that have sold, projects that you've been in, like anything where your blog, I tell artists all the time, if you could do a blog, that would be amazing because then you could share with people what you're up to. Um, and the blog can also be posted on social media, so it gives you content. So for me, um, websites are critical for an artist's success. Um, and uh, if you would like some advice, we also I also do coaching for artists. Um, you're more than welcome to. Um, I don't know. The lights just flashed. Everything good? Can you still hear me, everybody? Are we good? Okay, the lights just flashed. We have we're having like this uh, this terrible weather today. Like it's been stormy all day long. So um, I just want to make sure that we're everybody can hear me. Okay, good. So um, anyway, I, there it goes again. Like it just like for a brief it's second. Brilliant. It's the it's yeah. But um, so website is very critical to also show that you're that you see yourself as professional. Uh, but we, what I was saying was, uh, we do give website uh, analysis. Um, if you want to sign up for a coaching session, absolutely, you can. Um, on the website, you can just click on a coaching session with me, like a one-on-one, -on -one, and I'm happy to schedule a specific time just for you. So um, that is something different than this is, but I just want you to know that I can put that out, out there just for you individually if you have anything you know, because there were some questions here that were very, very specific to each person, to the person that asked it. And I'd rather talk to them about it in person because it might not apply to everybody. I'm trying to be as general as I can to apply to over 200 people that are, are watching right now, which is amazing. So um, I think the next thing, um, here's one going back to galleries. Um, how are gallery are galleries still a good channel for selling art versus just doing it ourselves online? So, okay, raise your hand if you sell a tremendous amount of your own art on your own Instagram or your own social media. Yeah, Susie, you do you sell a lot? Okay, that's awesome. Congratulations. That is a tough nut to crack. So I commend you for selling a lot of work. 95% of artists, I would say, haven't cracked that nut. 
So um, I think that there's no reason why you can't find good galleries out there that are a good fit for you and you can do different things. Own marketing, email marketing, blogs, all those things. It's all connected. And to be able to be successful, um, you have to have all that in motion. So um, I think it's important. Uh, galleries are still very important um, tools for an artist to sell their work because let's face it, people can go and physically see the art and you really uh, can't do that, uh, you know, as well. Um, you know, people tell me all the time, you know, they come in here and they look at the art and they're like, wow, it looks so much better in person. It's true. It really is true. You know, it just glows under the right light. You can get close, you can go far, you can really experience it so much better in person. So galleries are a very, very important tool in um, helping you sell your work, but it's not everything. So, you know, uh, there are so many other things that you can do. So I think you just need to do a quick recap on those points, just okay. so you know how to add them, and they're very interesting. Okay, so what cut out? I don't know what cut out. Oh, the galleries. Why, why do we still need galleries? Yeah. Okay, so, so, so we it, so it did cut out on um, the galleries, like the yeah. selling points on how to get into a gallery. Uh, the benefits. You were talking about how, like, Susie, for example, was selling a lot of her own. How do why do we still need to go through galleries? Okay, what are those good points? Okay, so I will. Uh, thank you. Yeah. I will definitely uh, repeat that. So uh, to me. It's all encompassing. I think that, uh, you know, after 30 years of doing this, I have tried so many ways of selling art. And um, I, I truly feel that by having a gallery, it's tre tremendous. And um, so uh, a gallery showing and selling your work is super important. But that doesn't mean that you can't do your own marketing or your own social media. With your own research. I mean, you are responsible for your art business, and uh, and and having that mindset of uh, if that's what what you want to do, if you want to sell. Now, there are artists out there that don't care about selling. They just want to get into museums. They want the notoriety of being in museums or whatever, uh, you know, and, and they don't necessarily need the money. But I'm going to tell you from my experience. Everybody needs money. Like, you know, for the most part, everybody needs. So gallery and your own marketing uh, is, I think, very, very important. But it can't just pick one. It's got to be very well-rounded. Okay, I have another uh, question. Um, okay, this is this is a good one. How, how much time? Actually, I've got another we minute. Well, we're going to open it up to questions, too. Yeah, so five so, minutes until five minutes. Okay, so in five minutes, I'm going to open it up to some questions and then I'm going to share with you a little bit more about what we do. Um, so this last question is how um, as an artist should I work with an interior designer? Um, okay, so from my experience, interior designers um, they sometimes reach out to an artist individually, and, and that's a good thing. But uh, just like uh, interior designers and corporations and like healthcare facilities, they need somebody like us, like an art consultant or a gallery that's going to be able to pull together many different types of art for that particular project. And let's face it, uh, designers and people that are buying art uh, for larger projects. They don't have the time to do all the work and talk to each individual artist. They want someone that's going to do the legwork for them, like what we do, the virtual presentations. We take things to them. I mean, there is so much work that we do behind the scenes for the designers as well as for our other clients. So, uh, which they and they just don't want to. They just don't have the time. I mean, so but some some do. But in my experience, most of the times. Um, you know, so your your best advantage is to find art galleries, art consultants, um, you know, and and try to find them so they can help you with those projects. And we do the same thing. We reach out to interior designers and say, hey, you know, what projects are you working on that we can help you with? 
Uh, is it, you know, a marketing firm that needs artwork or is it a multi-million dollar house that is right now it has all bare walls? You know, we're working with an interior designer right now where she gave us all these beautiful fabrics and she said, Lisa, I want you and your team to find art for a, an entire house. It's like 12,000 square feet and we're working on that right now. So, um, you know, they, it's very, it's, we make their jobs easier so they don't have to go through all that, um, that time of uh, going through individual artists because I mean, even though they, uh, I think they appreciate, you know, seeing the work, it's just, you know, you have to think about the time and, um, how, how, um, it's a lot of effort for them to individually talk. Uh, with you. So um, one thing that I wanted to also share with everybody is um, our new program that is um, all about helping you as artists be the best that you can be. And um, it's called, it used to be called the Art Collective, but now we changed the name to uh, Smart Cell. So basically what this is, um, is a whole way of marketing your and what it includes is we we started an exclusive online platform it's sort of like Facebook or Instagram just for ADC artists so on that platform we talk about projects that we're that we need art for we talk about national projects that require artwork and those are called RFPs requests for proposals uh, we show those out there we give artists tips uh, we are meeting with artists. Uh, we're going to start doing studio visits where you and other artists show us what you're working on in your studio. The entire team, we get together and we look at your work. Um, we also, we're going to start doing podcasts on there. So the um, we're going to be, yes, Julia, that's what we're going to be doing. Like you didn't know that. Because we haven't seen you since the holidays. <laughs> There's so many great things that we're going to be doing. Um, for artists on that particular platform, um, and that is a membership, and it's very reasonable. It's twenty nine dollars a month, and you'll be connected with us. So then, what happens is, if you are an artist and you need more marketing, uh, we can. We've got an online magazine. We've got. We're going to start printing the magazine and sending it out to. Uh, we've got like 10,000 artists on our, in our database and also to our clients. We're going to be, uh, we would consider you for national shows that we go to. We would uh, look at your work uh, for a solo show here at the gallery or to show it here and show your work on our, on our projects. There are so many ways that we are helping artists uh, market their work. There's never a fee to be in the gallery. So if we love your work and and, and you uh, don't need marketing, if you don't need that part uh, in your business, um, then we, if we think your work fits with our gallery, we are absolutely happy to take a look at it, like I was talking about before. So um, let's see, should we open it up? Okay, so now we have about uh, 10, 13 minutes to open the floor to questions. So basically what we're gonna do is uh, if you have a question, uh, I want you to raise your hand before you unmute, right? So if, they ra if you raise your hand, then how do we pick that person, Julia? Like how do we, so then they know to unmute. You'll just call them. I'll just call them, but I can't see everybody. I can only see a few people. Okay. They'll pop up. Start. Okay, so. You can use your virtual hand. Yes, uh, you can use your virtual hand or you can raise your hand. Does anybody have a question? It looks like in the chat, um, we have a question from Valerie asking, what size art are you? Uh, do you see selling right now? Large format or smaller works? Okay, Valerie, where are you? Can you unmute yourself so I can see you? So I can be talking to you? Okay, that's Valerie Corbin. So, Here I am. Okay, I am. go ahead. Oh, so my qu question was, she read it though, was, you know, uh, I hear uh, what size work is selling? Large, 30, 48 by 48 plus, or is it more of the smaller works right now? I can't answer that because it depends on, you know, the project and who's looking at it. You, you, uh, you know, uh, we sell every size. 
and from small, petite, small, medium, large, massive. Um, for us, it just, uh, we, I, I really can't answer that. Um, now there might be other, you know, galleries that specialize in certain sizes, but for me, I think as an artist, create a variety. Um, and the nice thing about small works is let's say we have a long hallway and we need to fill a hallway. Um, I always like to recommend a series of smaller pieces because they're more intimately viewed. You, you know, as you're walking down a hallway, you can walk down and you can see smaller pieces. So, you know, in a hallway, I always like to recommend smaller pieces. If I'm doing someone's home, like uh, they have like a great, a great roof and have a massive wall. Of course, I, I always have to put something dynamic in the space. Like that. Uh, same with like a corporate lobby or a conference room. I always like to do large pieces that really set the tone. Uh, for the space, so it really depends on um, the the uh, the need and who's looking for it. So my answer is, as an artist, create a variety. So any other uh, questions out there? Oh, Jen, Jen Cornett, have you? Uh, can you unmute yourself? You have a question. Oh, that was. Oh, I think I sent. I sent it in, yeah, earlier when we um, submitted them, like we signed up. I was just wondering, like, in terms of like, what are your thoughts in terms of like Cincinnati as as a market, like in terms of, of buying as opposed to like regionally or other parts of the country? You mean um, when you say buying, buying your art or selling? Well, or like, I guess since like people in Cincinnati, like, are they, are they, do you see more people buying art like in this area versus, you know, regionally, like other parts of the country? I mean, I mean, we, we do projects all over. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, that is uh, such a general question. It's hard to yeah. answer. You know, um, we, you know, we've been out there a long time, so, uh, I mean, we really, we just sell art in so many different locations. I mean, I love Cincinnati. Like, where are you going to find a 13,000 square foot gallery? Yeah. Like, you know what I mean? And be able to afford it. You know, most galleries are 1,000 to 2,000 square feet. So um, for me, I love Cincinnati and I love being able to show and sell art um, from artists all over the world. International artists as well as national, regional um, and local, like I love having new art in here. And, um, you know, so uh, I really, I, if that's a hard question to answer. We're just yeah. gonna focus on selling art in general. Gotcha. And last year, I think for the most part, was it one of our best years? Um, and, and, and that's okay. You know, and I think a lot of people, the economy, you know, but you can't blame, you know, there's so many different factors and why, you know, artists might say, well, I just didn't sell. I was hoping to sell so much more than I did or whatever. Like and then another artist will say, oh, I sold a lot. Like, it's just relative. I, I don't know to what you're doing, how your, you know, your approach is. But for me, if you don't try, you'll never know. Mm -hmm. Like, that's the main thing. If that's one thing that I can, that my mindset is for this year is you've got to just try you've got to put yourself out there and you know i get rejected like i i might be working on a project and they'll say oh shoot we put that whole on hold we don't really need the art anymore it is hard like it's like you put so much time and energy and but then you know what something else comes up but if you stop and don't do anything because you're so depressed about whatever it might be, then you'll never know. Like you gotta just keep moving. So that's why I really wanted to do this for all of you today. And I'm gonna I'm gonna do this again because there's way too many questions here that I haven't answered. But I just want to let you know that this is this is a career that has its ups and downs. It truly does. And but if we're committed. If you're doing what you're passionate about, just like what I am and what my team is, you just have to keep going for it, you know? So, 
So any other questions? Oh, Karen Ross, where are you, Karen? Unmute yourself. There you are. Okay, can you hear me? But we, uh, yeah, if you, um, so go ahead. We're just trying to get a, uh, the phone. I don't know. You can hear me? It might be a client. So Karen, what's your question? Hi, um, I just wanted to hear your take about how it works with um, shipping costs. Like if you're, I live in Chicago, for example, and if you wanted to work with a Chicago artist, um, what your expectations for the shipping are, and then if the work doesn't sell and all that fun stuff. Right. So again, you know, um, if an artist is either local or regional or within driving distance, I mean, it's always nice to have you deliver. Like Chicago's not that far from Cincinnati. Um, so, and that way we get a chance to meet you and talk to you. And I, I just love the relationship part of, of that with artists. Um, we do uh, expect the artist to cover the shipping expense. Um, so uh, whether it's to the gallery and if it doesn't sell going back, that's just something that we um, do require of the artist. Now we try to save you some money. So we have a full uh, framing facility here um, and we stretch canvases every day. We actually frame our work. So a lot of times if an, if an artist has, uh, you know, has a work on canvas that they can roll and they could ship to us. A lot of times it's easier to do that. It's less expensive to do that than to ship a, a large piece. And then um, we do wholesale framing for artists. So we would give you a quote on that. So, and then um, when we, you know, so we try to save our artists as much as possible, knowing that shipping is an issue. It's considered a business expense. Just like, you know, we take your artwork, we put it in our van, we take it to the client. We don't charge for any of that. Our consultation services are complimentary. So, you know, it's all of that. There's a lot of legwork and expense that goes into running a business and shipping is just one of them, you know? So um, what we do is uh, when we sell a piece to entice people to buy from us, um, we uh, offer no shipping uh, charge to the buyer. So basically what I mean is if someone buys a piece from us and they want it shipped, we don't charge anybody for anything. We absorb, we absorb that cost. So, um, and what we do is when we have your artwork up on our website, we always add a 10% uh, fee on top of that, which doesn't affect you in any, uh, any way, except it just helps us uh, cover those expenses, uh, you know, cause we offer, free installation, delivery, shipping, and all that stuff. So it helps us as a business kind of um, cover some of those costs. So, um, but overall shipping would be something that would be part of your business expense. Okay, last question. We have about three minutes. Jorge, are you anywhere? Um, you with us? You had a question. If not, then Sobo also did have a question as well. Sobo, okay. Are you still there? Do you have a question? Unmute yourself so we could hear you. Replay. I don't know. Oh, okay. Oh, I know. Can you, because we can't hear you, Sobo. Can you, I could not unmute. Oh, uh, Jorge could not unmute. Yes, we will be sending out a recording. So um, we will be posting this on the platform for uh, Smart Art, uh, Smart Cell. Also, another thing I wanted to tell you, here are going to be some upcoming topics that um, actually what we have available right now, if you, um, at your convenience, you can sign up for these expert courses. Um, and we've already put five expert courses out there. They're usually about an hour, 45 minutes to an hour long. Um, we've done uh, what are corporations looking for as far as art goes. All of this is art related, obviously. Licensing your art for another revenue stream. Um, how to curate your own artwork in your own uh, studio so when people come in, it's easier to buy. 
uh, and help you sell more. Uh, what do interior designers want? We've interviewed an interior designer and she talks about what she looks for. Uh, that's on, a, on an expert course, as well as uh, many other ways of how you can get into a gallery. That was our most recent one. Those courses sell for $199, but if you're part of the um, uh, the Smart Sell platform and membership, where right now if you sign up at $29, we will bump you up to the next tier and you will get all those courses for free. So we're going to do that for a minimum amount of time, um, limited amount of time. So uh, it's a great benefit for all of you. Upcoming, yes. I was just going to say, I think a great way to end this is with Jorge's question that he just oh, asked. Okay. Yeah. question. He said, Talitza, how does 2024 look for the art market? Wow, Jorge, that's a great, great question. I'm going to say I've never felt so energized. I think that. Um, it's, I think it's going to be a great year. I really do. So I'm looking forward to it. I've got an amazing team here at ADC. I, um, I, I feel like we're all energized and uh, we're, we're totally, we've already been selling ours. We've already been doing it and it's only been one weekend. So uh, I think that it's, it's going to be a really great year, but um, you got to do it. You got to go out there and get yourself, um, you know, got to show your artwork. And then I just wanted to let you know what upcoming uh, courses that we do have. Uh, we're going to have one on marketing and uh, social media and um, generating sales on your on your website, uh, how um, your website, oh, we can help you with that. What is your brand? What does that really mean, a brand, and what does that look like? Um, and then also another course that we're going to be doing later is turning a first-time buyer into a lifelong collector. So along with other things that we're going to be doing. So um, I am so happy that all of you were able to join me and my entire team today. Um, I will be putting out another um, another one of these uh, free sessions to all of you covering many more questions on this list that you gave me. I, uh, I but we'll let you know when that happens. Uh, in the meantime, you can uh, reach out for a coach, a coaching session from me. You can get right, I think right on my calendar. If you want to do a coaching session one on one. You can definitely do that. You can uh, sign up for the Smart Cell membership program. And you can also send us your artwork. We are happy to review it and um, and see if it's a good fit with our gallery. So um, those are some great ways that, that you can, um, you know, we can we can help you. So thank you, everybody. Have a wonderful, wonderful day. And it's a pleasure.